The freeze dryer has been pre-cooling now for over three hours, just a little over three hours. It's colder than negative 40 uh, currently, according to the display and also according to the thermometer underneath. So it's way past time to get the food in. I'm doing another batch of things out of the freezer to clear out things out of the freezer. So let's go find out what's in there. I'll try to do all the trays with the same food items because it's such a pain when there's different things on there. If you're trying to track it and weigh it and get the weights so that you can know how much is in each one, it's easier if they're all the same thing. It's certainly doable if they're not. And if it's things that you don't care about, like for instance vegetables, um, they don't really matter. They'll kind of absorb what they need. So you don't really need to weigh them. But if you're interested in the weight, or if you want to know how much water to put back in for like a stew or something, then it's good to know. And so having everything the same in the batch is easier for tracking purposes. If you're not worried about the weights, then it doesn't really matter. You just put them in there and when they're dry, they're dry. Um, and then you just bag them however you want by volume or, or split them up by weight or whatever, but you're not worried about how much water came out and so you're not worried about how much water goes in. But if you're trying to track it, then it's easier if it's all the same thing. Let's go get stuff. Uh, we're going to get more things out of the upright freezer as opposed to the chest freezer because I know I've got enough for quite a lot. Oh, better get my cart over here. So let's get some things out. And I'm going to use a couple of the um, corrugated plastic pieces to keep things in, kind of insulated off the rolling cart so that the trays don't warm up. I've got the trays. And Okay, four blocks of cilantro lime pulled pork and a half block of cilantro lime. Okay, and some white bean chicken chili. So here's four more blocks of white bean chicken chili. That gives me eight and a half blocks. So the only... Okay, so the only thing else that would fit on there are half blocks. So I could fit up to three more half blocks, and I'm not sure I've made any more half blocks in here. Um, got more chili. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven blocks of chili still. Okay, and a couple of half blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven blocks of chili and a couple of half blocks. So maybe I'll put half blocks in there. We'll come back and get those if we need some more. Otherwise I might stop with just the ones that I already have. Okay, tray one. So I'm going to do half the batch with cilantro lime pulled pork and half of it with chili. So I've got the full blocks of pulled pork and this is a different batch. So this one had some of the red sauce in it, some of the salsa. And having the blocks already made makes it very quick to put them on the trays. Tray 1, 1874. I'm going to just put the initials cilantro lime pulled pork. So I know that that's, that tray is filled with them tray two and the trays are nice and cold because they were in the freezer. And get the other two blocks of the pulled pork on there. And 1630, 1662 or three. I'm going to put two. Okay. Tray three. And some of the one pound blocks of White bean chicken chili from last month. And obviously I've got room for more, but I think I'm just going to do that so I don't have to mix yet another thing into it. So 1623. So white bean chicken chili. And tray four.
Okay, 1656. So I got all the items in there. Now I'm going to get thermometers in those. I'm going to use one of the pieces of corrugated plastic to keep it insulated from the table so that I don't uh, warm it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put a thermometer in there. Okay, it looks like there's a tall spot right there so I can go kind of like that and get into that spot there. Okay. And with these, I just need to get about that much of the thermometer in there to sense it right. It says about an inch. So with this, I can actually push this back and then go nice and low into the block. Going to again drill into there. Ideally I'd like it two-thirds of the way down, so in the right at the bottom third. But if I can get it about in the middle, that works for me. I've got it a little bit high so there's space under it. It'll settle down. Okay, let's see if that's deep enough. All right, they're ready to go in the freezer, or the freeze dryer. So we have four pounds of the white bean chicken chili and four and a half pounds of the cilantro lime pulled pork. We'll get them in, and it says it's negative 56 right now. But honestly, when it gets that cold, I don't think that that thermometer or the temperature probe is all that trustworthy. Because the thermometer underneath has been pretty steady at about negative 40 and hasn't been dropping. Okay, get that in there. Okay, do we have a seal all the way around? Almost. Using my palette knife again to kind of push that seal up against the door. And that could be unique to mine, and it could be because it's 550 batches old, and with all the opening and closing I do, that's over a thousand times that it's been opened and closed. Uh, probably closer to 1,500 or 2,000 times. So your seal may not have any problem. It may seal perfectly first time every time. But I make sure that I have that ring around there before I leave it on its own to start the vacuum later. Because I want to make sure that it doesn't have a vacuum leak on the seal. Because that seems to be the most common place. I think I've only had it fail to achieve vacuum twice and both times I was able to find uh, a very small amount of stuff across the seal uh, like lint or a hair or something. Other than that I've never had it fail to achieve vacuum. So I don't know, maybe that's not common. Anyway I make sure I've got that ring around there and it does. So we'll be back in a couple of days to check it and we'll be doing some of the rehydration with some of these things. So don't go away, we'll be right back. So it stopped six and a half hours ago, uh, so I'm going to rewarm it before I take them out and weigh them for the weight check. The bottom tray says about 42 below zero, and then about 40 below zero. So I'm gonna add enough time to uh, rewarm it. So there's my note last night about adding time. So I added four hours. So now it's had a total of 15 hours of final dry time. Now I'm going to restart. So more dry time. Valve was never opened. Continue and we'll see what it says. 
It says it's negative 53, and of course now the heaters turn on immediately and it'll start raising that. We'll come back a little bit later when the thermometers in the food say that it's at least 60 or 80 degrees so that I know we won't have condensation on it. Okay, be back in a little while. The two kinds of chili have had more than two more hours to rewarm because I got sidetracked. It's about to shut itself off again, so we'll take them out, weigh them, and put them back in. But to make sure they're dry. No point in hitting the down arrow. It had finished before I can get there, practically. So we'll open the drain valve. We'll get them out. Oh, and I'll be switching tray one and two and three and four again. 11.97 and I'm going to switch that with tray two. So I'll take tray two out first. 11.23 Then we'll switch those spots. So two is going to go up on top and one is going to come down to this spot. Now tray three Okay, 967. And this bottom tray is cooler, definitely cooler to the touch. 979. Okay, and those go back in. And tray four will come up a spot. And tray three will come down a spot. I have no doubt. Well, let me get this closed. I have little to no doubt that they're dry already. Uh, they've had quite a few extra hours overnight because it was going to be finished at one o'clock in the morning or something like that. So I added four hours last night and now it's had more than two more hours to rewarm. So that's an additional six hours of final dry. There should be no doubt that it's dry already, but I'm gonna put it in there. Well, two things. One, I have to go somewhere. So I can't bag them right now anyway. So I might as well let them stay in there and dry longer. And then I can weigh them to make sure that they're dry. I've mentioned a few times, I need to mention it more. My machine is from five years ago, um, 2017. The new machines are faster. The firmware or software is much better. They're a much faster machi machine. They're more sophisticated in electronics to know when it's done. They're probably more trustworthy, which of course I still wouldn't trust until I check it and verify it. But they're, they are a much better software or firmware than the older machine. Um, and I also have no interest in upgrading this one to that. If this one ever dies or if I wear it out, then I would consider a newer machine. Otherwise, I'll stick with this one. We keep our cars for 15 years. I'll keep this for a long time. So we'll get that restarted so it can uh, tell us whether or not it was dry hours ago. Okay, so I'm gonna use more dry time. Drain valve is closed and checked. Continue, and I don't really worry about cooling that because I've got it quite cool. And I'll add an additional 15 minutes to make sure, but I'll also add another hour. Uh, just in case I don't make it back in time. With that, it's set. I'll come back later and we'll bag them. I'm finally back. It's been a lot of hours. Uh, it's still running, but it's in the last 10 minutes now. So we're going to get them out. I assume they've been dry for quite some time because it's been a lot of hours. But they got to set somewhere until I'm ready to bag, so they might as well sit in there in a drying cycle. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can over dry them. I hope not. Okay, let's get them out and check them. You can see it's still almost 100 degrees. Pressure's really low. We'll bypass the last of that. I'll go turn off a couple more things. Open the drain valve. Hmm. 
Okay, tray one. All right, eleven ninety seven. So no change. And this is after about four or five hours. Tray two. Okay. Again, looks like no change. Going to double check, make sure it's zeroed. All right, so 11.23, also no change. Tray three. Nine sixty seven again, no change, and I'm not surprised at all that there's no change because it's been a lot of hours. And also nine seventy nine, maybe eight. So at the most, a fraction of a gram. All right, gonna get this moved out of the way. Put that on there. So two slightly different recipes of the pulled pork. One with the red uh, salsa and the salsa verde. And one with just salsa verde. Okay, let's get this stopped. Going to get no defrost. Okay, then we'll get the little defrost baffle into place. And the fan in. And I get the thermometer out from underneath. Okay. I'll get this defrosting. We'll get the time that it took, or the time that it says on the monitor, uh, the time that it says on the display, and the power usage. As I've mentioned before, and other people have brought up, the time that it takes me to do a batch of a certain item is very has very little value for anybody else um, but yet it's one of the most asked questions how long did that take well even if I do the same batch myself the same size batch two times in a row it's still hours difference and with the newer machines they're considerably faster so unless you have the machine from 2017 running the same software that came on it in 2017 without upgrading it and using the same oil that I'm using, the same temperature in the room, the same humidity, yours could be wildly different in the amount of time. So I keep adding this time because it is interesting. I can compare it a batch of mine to another batch of mine. Uh, but for your machine, it's probably not going to have any real use or value. But it's there if you want it. It shows almost 51 hours. I know that it was done, since it didn't lose any weight this time, I know that it was done quite some time ago. So before the rewarming, uh, or before any of the, the rest of this time. So I know I it got to back it up to at least 47 hours. I suspect it was considerably less than that. I can't prove it, so I'm going to use 47 hours. The power usage on that chili and cilantro lime was 30.53 kilowatt hours. And it would have been considerably less if I'd been here to take it out on time, because it's got 13 hours more than what it needed, probably. So I'm going to reset, get it set for the next batch. All right, let's get the weights for those trays. So the cilantro lime pulled pork, and you can see there's two different batches. This one's just the salsa verde. This one's salsa verde plus the uh, picante sauce. 11.89. Tray two. 11.15. 9.60. Or 59, so it's a little bit different. And this is the white bean chicken chili on tray four. So 970. All right, so we'll bag these 
chicken chili first. And each one of these blocks was a pound, so I really don't need to weigh it right now. I can just subtract the current weight from a pound to know how much water goes back in. So I'll do the math on these and get right back. Got the bags labeled for the white bean chicken chili. It was a pound, which was about two cups. White bean chicken chili, the date it went into the freeze dryer. I'll fill in the water needed as soon as I put them in the bag and weigh them. And that it was batch 551. I'm going to take this off the tray. And then I can use one of these other ones at a time. So we'll zero that out. And I think since I'm going to be lightly crushing these, I'll get a going to add a glove to there. And then I'm going to do the one on the tray because that way it's more contained. And then I'll just move the other one on, back onto the tray because I don't want to crush up the beans and the pieces of meat. I just want to squish it just enough to kind of squish the sauce so that it breaks up enough to slide into the bag. The amount of time it takes to freeze dry a batch is going to be dependent a lot on, of course, what you put in, how much water is even in that product. But another thing is how thick it is. See, the two cup ones like this, the one pound, tend to be fairly thin, and so they do pretty well. When I did the scallop potatoes, I did a pound and a half. They were really thick and took a very long time. Another thing that's going to affect how long it takes is what kind of food it is. For instance, pineapple and citrus tend to take longer, unless you blend them up. All right, so that one's in there, and I'll do that to each one. The newer machines are considerably faster. The firmware is better, and so the way they operate are, is actually different than what the older one is. The vacuum freezing doesn't exist on this older version. You can mimic that some if you want, and I've done that, but it's still not the same. Now, the cilantro lime pulled pork, I'm going to go ahead and again move it onto two trays. Well, I guess that's the one I drilled the hole in. I better move this one. Now these are going to be a little bit more difficult to put in there probably because they're not going to crumble as easily as the white bean chicken chili. And I still don't want to... Uh, I don't want to powder the, the big chunks of pulled pork. So I just want to do it enough to get the sauce kind of apart. So I probably should have just used a bigger bag. It would have been easier. And maybe it might be easier if I don't crumble it. Maybe if I just put it into two pieces like this. All right, let's try that. I'm just kind of putting the big chunk in there and letting it kind of conform to the bag by pressing on it. That seemed to work better for these big pieces. All right, and then the little half pound one. And this one I should be able to just um, put it in two pieces.
So I'll tear the scale out, or that bag out, so zero it out. All right. So originally that was a half pound, which is about 226 grams. So minus, I'll call it 81, and round that off to, it needs about 145 grams of water. And I'll zero out the bigger bag. So that would need about 277 grams of water to rehydrate it back to the same as it was before. Oops. Oh yeah, these are all a pound. So I want to check to see if these other ones are more similar. Jeez, that's close. There's only a few grams difference. Okay, and then the white bean chicken chili needs about 346 grams of water added back in. The white bean chicken chili and the cilantro lime pulled pork is bagged in a total of nine bags. I used eight quart bags and one of the pint bags. Now I'm going to add 300 cc oxygen absorbers to each bag and then zipper them shut and then afterwards we'll heat seal them. And on these I'm going to kind of tuck them down the side to make sure that they stay away from the seal when I go to seal it. And these are low enough, I probably don't really need to worry about it. But get in the habit, better to do it the same way. Then I'll squeeze out any extra air I can if there's space at the top, like this chilly one there was. You can see, nicely closed. Give it a little bit of a shake, make as much space as I can underneath. And the cilantro lime pulled pork, the bigger bags, the one pound bags, they're pretty full. So kind of close them more by pulling the corners out on the top and kind of zippering it from the middle. Okay, next, heat seal time. So get these heat sealed. So heat sealing as high up on the bag as I can again. Gonna hit that first bag twice. Make sure it's all the way up to temperature. Okay, nice wide seal all the way at the top with room for a couple more tries if I mess that one up or if I want to cut it off and use part of it. And even though there, even though there's no front to the bags, after I put the label on it, then I like to seal it with this side up so I can kind of glance at it and see what I messed up and needs to be fixed. If that ever happens. Next, before they get stored in the bins for long-term storage, I'm going to add a gross weight. So this bag, as it sits with everything in it, is 135 grams. If moisture starts going into that bag, it will get heavier. I'll be able to put it on the scale, find out if it weighs more than 135 grams. And if the scale is bouncing between two numbers, I will take the higher number. As soon as I get these all labeled, they'll be ready to put in the bins. So this is our main rack system. You've probably seen it before. And if you take note of the little blue spot of tape right there. And one right there. Now that we've got the 50 batches in eight tubs with a little room to spare. So you can see we could add a little bit more and that's over 540 pounds of wet weight of food. Um, so we could get at least two or three more batches, maybe more. Uh, you probably know, you probably just saw that one. But I haven't yet. So now, uh, batch 551, we're going to put in these tubs. So this is our main rack system. And so uh, all of these have a front one and a back one. So, so if I pull this out, there's another tub back there, so 13 back and the 13 front. And I could have labeled these anyway. That's just when we started putting up the racks, we had two racks deep and we thought, well, we'll have the front one and the back one. I could have just as easily had been one, two, three, four, 
and just label them that way. So it doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent or you can find them again. And with our database, we know we can find every bag. So it's never been too much of a problem. Now, uh, to make it easier on me when I'm down here without having to check the database every time, I have the little pieces of blue tape. That tells me that that bin has significant room in it. So if I want to put a batch in there, there's space for it. So each one of these, so we've got two down there. That means the front and back one. Oh, can't see that anymore. So if I've got two pieces of tape, that means the front one and the back one have space. Otherwise, it's just the front one. So we have two, four, six. So we have six bins out of this that have fairly significant space. So three of the little tubs and three of the big tubs have space. We've used things up out of them and created enough space that there's room to put something in. Or they're even empty because we, they got really low and we put the rest of them into one of the others that was getting low. Now, batch 551, the cilantro lime pulled pork and the white bean chicken chili can go in a tub and then I'll record it and we'll update the database. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in 15 front because it's right here handy. The other ones would be off screen. And I'll still leave the piece of tape on it because it's still going to be fairly empty. And of course these tubs hold far, far less than the big tubs. But that's the beginning of it's the beginning of tub 15 front. Yeehaw. Okay, so 15 front now has those nine bags. Now as we go forward on this, continuing on these, we'll start doing a lot more of the rehydration also. So if there's any specific item that you want to see rehydrated or cooked in a certain way once it's rehydrated, let me know. We'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching and thanks for the support.